<laughs> being Hunter Biden means never having to say you're sorry. You know, this is a man who was getting $86,000 a month from a Ukrainian, a Russian-backed Ukrainian oil and gas company. For consulting. Consulting. Right. Mm. Consulting. He got three, I got $3 million just like that from the mayor of Moscow's wife, the ex-mayor of Moscow's wife. He was involved in several China deals. It was basically, you know, a tour of all America's enemies. Mm -hmm. Uh, and mm -hmm. Hunter Biden was there getting money from them all. And this is when his father was vice president. When his I father think, was right. vice president. Right. Mainstream media gives you the impression that there is nothing good about America. In direct contrast to that, my podcasts will prove by examples that America has always been and still is the land of opportunity for everyone. Hello and welcome to another episode in the series Life Lessons with Dr. Bob. My guest today is Phelan McLear, one half of the husband and wife team of Phelan McLear and Anne McElhenney. They produce Hollywood-style documentary films on important topics such as the dangers, dangers of environmentalism, the lies being told about fracking, and more recently films about abortion and politics. Phelan's resume is as impressive as it is long, and it is very long. So I'm just going to touch on some of his accomplishments so that we can then start our conversation. In addition to producing documentary films, Phelan is a New York Times bestselling author and one of the most successful crowdfunders in the world. Together with his wife, Anne, he has raised $6 million in eight separate crowdfunding campaigns. He and Anne co-authored co the book Gosnell, The Untold Story of America's Most Prolific Serial Killer. It reached number three on the Amazon bestseller list and sold out in three days. And the movie with that same title was the most successful film project ever on Indiegogo, having raised $2.3 million in just 45 days. Unlike most documentary films that feature talking heads, their films bring factual stories to life in an entertaining way that is the equal to any thriller that Hollywood produces. Their film Gosnell is a true crime drama. It's so gripping that I watched it twice, even though I knew the ending. The team's most recent movie, My Son Hunter, became a massive media event with The Daily Cause and The Guardian writing 5,000 words about the movie before they had even seen it. The New Yorker devoted 2,000 words to their coverage. Newsweek wrote about it five times, The Guardian twice. It was also covered in The Washington Post, Politico, L.A. Magazine, and The Daily Mail. But as you can imagine... Most of the coverage from the mainstream media was negative. Not so much about the quality of the movie, but about the topic. Hunter Biden being a crook and taking huge bribes from foreign nationals to influence his father. And we now know it's true. It wasn't Russian disinformation campaign. He is a crook. Welcome to the show, Philem. Thanks for having me, Dr. Bob. It's a, it's a pleasure. We'll start with a few softball questions. Okay. What's the origin of your name? It's spelled P-H-E-L-I-M, Phelim. Yes. It's an Irish saint, actually, Saint Phelim. Um, it's after a saint. Yes, okay. and there was the Saint Phelim uh, Aer Lingus aircraft, which crashed in 1963. Anyway, it's, a, it's a, funny, it's an unusual name even in Ireland, actually. There's, you know, it's, it's unusual, but there's a few of us around in the world, you know. Well, you mentioned Ireland, so judging from your last name and that accent, it's pretty safe to assume that you were born somewhere in Ireland. So yes. how did you end up getting to be living in Venice, California? That's a good question. Actually, it all started, like many things, on a mountain in Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> but you've never heard that on your podcast before. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> yeah. So Transylvania is a real place. I just want to make, put that on the record. It's, uh, it's in Romania. I was in Romania f as the uh, East European correspondent for the Financial Times. I covered Romania, Bulgaria, and the Republic of Moldova. And... Uh, 
we were going up a mountain, me and my wife Anne, to uh, to to cover a story about an evil gold mining company coming to rip the environment, rip the women, kill, murder, of course. pollute of course. the whole thing. It's capitalism. Uh, capitalism, terrible. And uh, we we our biggest problem. We had the story already written before we went there. We we're going up on the train, and. Uh, our biggest problem was how we were going to get the word vampire into the headline because we were going to Transylvania. You know, these are the yeah, things that worry yeah. you. So uh, so we got up there and we discovered that, uh, I remember we walked into this room. So the mining company were going to destroy the village. said, we will buy your house and build you a, village, a new village down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, so they built a model house in the middle of the village and said, this, is, this could be your house if you sell it to your house. So we walked in, and I remember meeting this 86-year-old woman uh, standing in the in the living room of the of this beautiful Swiss chalet type thing, and uh, she was crying. And we went over with, actually, it was, it was the early 2000s, so we went over with our big microphones, because they were big then, and uh, I said, why are you crying? Thinking, this is our story. The evil mining company has driven this woman to tears. And she said, I just hope I live long enough to live in a house like this. Oh. Right? And the environment, international environmental movement got wind of the gold mining project mm-hmm. and prevented the project from going ahead. So that 86-year-old woman never got to live in her fancy-smancy house. Right? Which, which she and all the other residents of the village would have had. Two-thirds of the village uh, villages didn't have indoor plumbing in Romania in the yeah. year 2003. Right, so but their lives were saved by the environmentalists. Their, their poverty was yeah. saved, actually. Yeah, they that's were, right. They were right. preserving their lifestyle. Preserving. Yes, their lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they, this is a, this is. I realized very quickly, environmentalists they confuse poverty with a with a with a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. They think poverty is 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 a culture. Is yeah, and you shouldn't disturb the culture. You shouldn't disturb the culture. Mm-hmm. So the woman, the, the gold mining project never went ahead. So I did a, a documentary. I took an on and there's been mining in this village, by the way. The Romans invaded Romania because of the gold, mm. 2,000 years. The reason the Ro- Romania is called Romania is because the Romans invaded it, R-O-M. Right? I had no idea. Yeah, and they went, and they this because of the gold in Transylvania. They, were, they And there's you can go there and you walk into ancient Roman mines. Uh, the communists, of course, mined it as well and polluted it. Mm-hmm. This gold mine company was going to clean up the pollution and remine it. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, the place is still filthy, it's still polluted, and people are still living in poverty. And I think we came down on the train and we realized, whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the 86-year-old woman or are you on the side of the Swiss and Belgian environmentalists who went and lived there a couple of years or a year or half a year and saved the village and then moved all back to their rich home in Switzerland? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you have a choice to make. And we realized that for these villagers, the biggest enemy and their their biggest enemy in life is not big business. Their the the thing that's making them poor is is big environment. Wow. So is that the first? Uh, that was what kicked off uh, yes. uh, your your conservative views yes. about the environment. And we made a documentary. Then oh. we took an unemployed miner from the village and brought him to a gold mine in a mine in Madagascar, which was being prevented by environmentalists. And we brought him to a gold a proposed gold mine in Chile and that was being prevented by environmentalists and he found the same we all, same, same shit same shit different accent you know mm-hmm. and he was shocked uh, yeah, and uh, he just couldn't understand that people would want to keep he was shocked by the poverty in Madagascar right and he couldn't believe that anyone would want people to live like this especially rich westerners and uh, but it's when, quaint it's quaint. quaint. It's like they, free they, range. Their, their chickens are yes. certainly free range. They're, oh, they're not in you, cages, right? They're pretty thin looking, free range, you know. Uh, yeah, got a good thin. diet. Yeah. Uh, they're not fed any uh, any artificial anything there. And uh, we made a documentary called Mind Your Own Business. Oh, M-I-N-E. that is fantastic. That's a clever play on words, Mind yep. Your Own Business. And uh, we it suddenly became popular mm. in America. Uh, we'd never really thought of America before. And, and suddenly there was a market. I, I thought... All my liberal friends were going to tell me how wonderful I was because I'd made this untold story. It was this kind of, oh, wow. I thought, this is an interesting story. You know, whose side are you on? Yeah, people. People yeah. or big environment. Because mm-hmm. people think of environmentalists as scrappy. Big environment is, is, is as powerful as big business. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. these are two forces in the world opposing each other. 
nowadays they're kind of working hand and in hand. really they're against progress isn't yes. that what they're against yes they're funny against that's progress. one of the things that we say uh, that one of our interviewees uh, say is progressives are not don't believe in progress mm -hmm. you know it's a, it's a misleading i call them the the regressives uh Good they term. want they want to go backwards. Uh, you know, conservatives are supposed to be conservative, conserving things. But conservatives are the real progressives. They embrace new technology. They want to go forward. They want to make things better, simpler, faster, uh, because poor people uh, can afford more. Yeah, absolutely, and, and right. have better lives. So that's so we suddenly we were suddenly popular in America. Ah, and it's always right. nice to go where you're liked. So we came to America, <laughs> and where the weather I, usually is nicer. Pleaser. I'm a people pleaser, so I came to the people who pleased. Who I pleased, pleased you, with. right? So did you move that? Uh, how long ago was that? It that was, was the around first... 2006, 2007, and then we moved there pretty quickly, just in time. Uh, we moved to this great, wonderfully conservative country. Uh, called America just as Obama got elected. Uh -huh. yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, trying to reverse it, trying to yeah. uh, uh, be an environmentalist on all on uh, on all cylinders. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so then yeah we then we made a documentary about uh, climate change, climate alarmism, um, and you know we then have been we've been producing plays and movies and YouTube's and everything anything just to get make try and bring stories to people in entertaining ways. A great mission, a great mission. As I mentioned in my introduction, Philem, I was, and I'm still very impressed with your film on Dr. Kermit Gosnell, the abortionist who in 2013 was convicted of first degree murder in the deaths of three infants. These three babies, I'll tell you, these three babies were born alive. And as they were moving and crying, Gosnell cut, or as he put it, he snipped their spinal cords and placed them in the trash. How did you hear about this trial? What got you interested well, in it? Well, we made a documentary about fracking. Um, Tell called, us about that, too. Sure. Yeah, Frack Nation. Uh, it was, um, there was a documentary called Gasland, which has really been very, very damaging to America and to the world, especially now with um, Putin controlling the world, you know, controlling gas supplies to uh, Europe. If Europe had fracked, Putin would be, Putin would be finished. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. if, if Europe had its own gas supply, Putin. Or not... if Germany didn't shut down their nuclear plants, yeah. Yeah, for well, example. Yeah. Yeah. Germany has, fr has fracking possibilities too, so does France. So we made a documentary about fracking. And of course, Pennsylvania is a big place for fracking. So I was in Pennsylvania doing a little tour with a movie there. And uh, I was in Philadelphia and, uh, you know, I had a day or two off, a couple of days off in between screenings and picked up the local newspaper and uh, saw a local report about this case, this Kermit Gosnell case. And it was pretty amazing. He uh, Just in a local paper. In, lo in, the, <clears throat> in the local paper, you know, as you say, an abortion doctor, three three counts of four counts. Actually, I think it was more. He was, and eventually he was convicted of, of four or three, and and the manslaughter of a patient. He, he actually murdered the patient, he, but he murdered a couple of patients. But he they weren't able to prove that. And uh, I thought this this is interesting. So I this is what journalists do in their day off. By the way, they go to the courtrooms mm. uh, to cover to look at interesting murder trials. So I went down there, and you know I walked in and. Uh, it was amazing. There in front of me was was God was this woman, this member of Gosnell's staff, right, giving evidence, and it was it was like about truly horrific things. And I want to say, you know, the movie is not horrific. The movie is like a Law and Order episode. We keep the horror is in your head, not in the not on the screen, and mm. telling truly awful things. Sitting a few feet away from me was Gosnell, right. This mass murderer, but and oh, and up on the wall, the size of that wall there, they'd blown the pictures of Gosnell's victims up, right? These babies and the women and all. And I was just looking at this, and I was like, and I've covered the troubles. I I I was a journalist in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. I've covered some pretty weird, messed up uh, court bombings cases. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Killings, and court, yeah. Oh, listen, the whole shebang. And I was looking at this, and you know. 
It was un- it was an unbelievable, surrealist, quiet courtroom. But the most shocking thing of all was when I looked behind me and there was row after row after row of empty seats. Mm-hmm. No, except for a couple of local journalists, no journalists were covering it. Right? And I'm going... Like, and this should have been explosive. I right? mean, look, journalists are different, right? You know, if we hear a bomb go off, we go towards the bombing, right? Yeah. And not, not because we're brave, because we're idiots, right? Uh, well, you got to get the story. And we got a disease called <clears throat> get the story, right? Mm-hmm. That got, get, gets us killed uh, or injured. Um, if it bleeds, it leads. That's the, that's the, the you know, that's mm-hmm. the crude and, and awful reality of journalism. This had murder. This was a doctor. This drugs. Had, drugs. He was right. he was selling. He was a uh, big provider. Philadelphia's of drugs. biggest opioid supplier. It had racism. He treated white women better than black women. Uh, he was let do what he did because uh, the authorities thought, oh, that's just the way they. Do. As, as one of the witnesses said, that's the way they do things in the ghetto. Mm. You know, um, people knew he was. He had, he had complaint after complaint after complaint. In fact, he wouldn't have been caught if it hadn't been for a drugs cop saying there's something wrong here. And when they raided the, the, his clinic for drugs, he went searching for for other things or he had a warrant to, to snooze around to see about the, vic- the victims he killed. So, it, and it had an interna- a national a story of national or international importance. This was a an abortion clinic. and um, An abortion mill, actually. Yes, right, yes. Right. And like... No reporters. And the reality, the reason there was no reporters there was because this shone a negative spotlight on abortion. Oh, I see. And they do yes. not want to, you know, they don't want to tell the truth. They don't want to tell it as it is even, you know, warts and all. They want to tell a narrative. They want mm. to tell a story that suits their agenda. That it's just pumping, popping a pimple. Yeah. yeah. So I remember I went back to Venice and... My wife was there, Anne, and Magda, who works with us, and I says, hey, guys, this is an amazing story. And and I started telling them, and they were shocked, and they said, but, yeah, we don't we don't want to touch abortion. Like, you know, we don't want to do that. And I said, mm. I says, so I uh, I ordered the transcripts. I I got to know the uh, the woman with the typewriter. Stenographer, type, the court The woman with the typewriter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I got, and I says, and I paid for them. I says, can I buy the transcripts? So she sent me a couple of days of transcripts. And I said, read these. Magda and I read these. Mm-hmm. And then they came back and they said, this is what we got to do now. Mm-hmm. So, And did you think that it had a, uh, it, that it would be successful to a larger audience? Yes, yes. Because it, at the end of the day, it's a true crime story, right? And that's very popular. Right. And if you, you know, you've seen the movie. We, we, I wanted, it, we wanted it to look like, a, funny, we wanted it to look like everything else. And that's a funny thing to say, yeah, right? No, I know what you mean. You know, if you, if you very often if you look at a conservative movie or a religious movie, you can spot them right away. Yeah, they're right. badly lit. They're they're badly acted, and there's just something not. They don't look like a Hollywood movie. They don't look like something you see on your TV screen. I wanted to make sure that people were flicking through their TV and they came across ours accidentally. Let's say mm-hmm. that it, they wouldn't go. They just go, oh, what's this? You know, but it looks like everything else. So it is, it's a, it's a very much a courtroom drama. It's very much a true crime docudrama. It's very much in that genre uh, because we respect, we love that genre. Uh, it's very yeah, I wouldn't, When I watched it, I wouldn't have known uh, that it was a documentary. You would just think it's a heck of an interesting yeah, story. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a, we call it a docudrama, right? Right. Because it's heavily, I mean, and so much of, it's very funny, so much of the, actual most dramatic moments in it very often people say based on a true story and then they throw in lots of made up drama ours is based on a true story but some of the drama we had to tamp down oh right there's a scene in it where the the abortion expert the prosecution brought in a good abortion doctor to show this is how we do it well Mm -hmm. and this is how Gosnell did it badly therefore he's guilty of murder he it was so beyond the pale and uh the jury had seen some horrific evidence through the trial. And uh, when the, the, the doctor, to prove his expertise, was asked, how many abortions have you done? And the doctor went like this. And he says, 40,000. And the jury did what you're doing, made a noise. It, went, it was the only time they audibly gasped during the 40, six. 40,000, 40, right? And we were 
we were doing it because it was a very dramatic and then then they had to explain what it was like and the jury went this is barbaric right and almost started to feel sympathetic towards Gosnell the, the, the prosecution were, were lo- felt they were losing the, the jury at this stage right and we during the movie we were going we can't say 43 no no nobody would believe it nobody would believe it, it, yeah, it right it sounds extreme so we cut it to 30,000 I'm not even <laughs> yeah. sure that was a good idea. Maybe we should have said 10,000, right? It sounds extreme. It sounds like you're making it up, right? Yeah. But no, so people, I think, people think of abortion as some kind of thing that, that happens, you know, in a little, you know, happens rare. Uh, was it safe, rare, and whatever the the phrase used to be? And it's like, no, it's, it's, it's an absolutely industrial process mm-hmm. where there are people doing... I ten know, a day. That ten a be. day. Yeah, yeah. For 40 years or 50 yeah, years. Yeah. 10 a wow. day. That's what she was calculating. Yes. Right. That's what how she came up with yeah. the number. And uh, and this woman, this person wasn't that old. Like, so, I mean, it's maybe more than 10 a day. Like, but, and she was under oath and, and you know, oh, wow, okay, okay. So, so yeah, so we, we actually cut back some of the really uh, amazing stuff that came out in the courtroom because we felt, we also felt people won't believe it, but also they'll, it'll take them out of their, They'll start calculating it and thinking about it, and we want them to focus on right, the movie. So right, you know, we had all this. You're better off saying a lower number. Yeah. Uh, and but I want to make clear the the the, the movie is not anti-abortion movie. It, it doesn't take a position on abortion. No. It takes a position against criminals. That's yeah. what it is, and against this particular individual. Yeah. Well, we wanted to bring the truth to people too, right? And and so it, it takes a, a position that this is our. We have a four one five hundred one c three. It's called the Unreported Story Society. Now, this wasn't made by the Unreported Story. It, 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 there are charities more recent, but it's the same principle. These are stories that are not told. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a reason, you know. I, I can't remember who it was. That journalism is something that somebody somewhere doesn't want published. <laughs> right? That's very good. So that's why we have none of that anymore. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because right. you look at the most of the journalism in America. There's a. It's what the government wants. Yeah. Or, right. or the the establishment, or the deep state, what what mm. they want, mm-hmm. and uh, we're we're saying let's let's publish something that they don't want. Mm-hmm. You know, if, you know, let's publish. If somebody's not calling for you to be banned, uh, then you're not you're not. You're not doing the job. No. So that's, that's <clears throat> now uh, in in thinking about the uh, the book and the movie. Uh, did you interview uh, Gosnell? Oh at all? yes, Mr. Gosnell. Yes, uh, yeah, and. Um, Somehow I got that short straw, really, for a long time. He got her phone number. We, we wrote to him and gave him Anne's phone number. I don't know why, uh, but anyway, thank <laughs> So Anne, my wife, who's a pretty hardy lady, right, and pretty strong. And look, she, she's done undercover work in Indonesia and Romania. There's two people in Indonesia serving lengthy jail sentences uh, because she infiltrated a baby selling ring in Indonesia, Ooh. right? So, but... Gosnell kept phoning her and phoning her and and you know she'd lift the phone and it would be will you accept a call from a prisoner at Huntington Correctional Institute and, uh, you know and like he'd, you'd be at a wedding and the next thing you get a, a call from a serial killer right and uh, Ooh, now why would he do that are you just lonely because he would listen I see yeah he will talk to I yeah. remember we had a conversation with the cop who investigated him and we said we're thinking of uh, reaching out to Gosnell do you think He'll talk to us, and the cop looked at us and goes, "He will be talking to you till the end of your days, right? He is a narcissist, mm-hmm. just wants the attention. Wants the attention. Wa- thinks he's God, and wants everyone to know that. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so we uh, and he still to this day, or at least from the film, still believes he did the right thing in yes. killing these babies. Yes. They yes. were born alive. Yes, right. Yeah, but you know when you. St- and he's good. He's good at, at at lying, but unfortunately, we and he. It's a couple of times he goes, "Oh, you've done your research," because we would ask him really pointed questions, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, they weren't born alive. Well, why did you snip their necks then? Right. And it's like, oh, uh, just to ensure. But well, you know, why do you have to ensure? Uh, and you know, he said they were injected with digoxin, which killed them before. And he goes, "Well, there's no record of your clinic ever having bought any digoxin since like 1992 or something." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I bought it. Yeah, no, you didn't. It's a controlled Bullshit. substance, right? right. So, <clears throat> and, I, and I will say the movie is is PG thirteen. There's no horror in it. It's as you know, it, you know, it's in your mind the horror. Uh, it's a courtroom drama, but yeah. So Gosnell would phone on. 
yammer on and talk. But it's good, good to get him talking because, you know, we got beautiful. Things. Like he delivered, he says, he delivered Will Smith. <laughs> Alive. <laughs> oh, maybe he dropped him on his head. Maybe that's, maybe that's an explanation as to, <laughs> for Will's recent behavior. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. But um, so you think eventually Anne just couldn't take it anymore to have this creepy serial killer phoning her at nice times. Where Change her like, number. So, no, I got the, she, he got my number then, so I got okay. the phone calls. Mm. So then, uh, then we went to visit him in prison. That was quite an experience. Now, uh, so the, you know, cause I thought uh, it was going to be, you know, you watch the movies, the plastic. Sure, reflexi, glass or something. Oh, yeah, and the, the, the phone. phone, yeah. <clears throat> oh, no, no. It's like, it's, it's like, it's actually like this. No kidding. Only the seats are closer. Oh, Sometimes boy. there was a table. It's like a university common room, right? I see. And you're in there, and there's all these guys with thick necks and tattoos in orange jumpsuits. And, and, and they're not handcuffed to the nothing, table? Zero. Whoa! Yeah. Well, I, I ain't like, going oh, to visit any prisoners, that's for sure. And I'm going, okay. And I'm thinking, like, one of these guys could just jump over. And, and kill you. And kill you. Like, yeah. snap my neck. Yeah, and, that's right. You know, you. But anyway, <clears> uh, <throat> and uh, we're sitting there. And uh, so I'm sitting here, and Anne's sitting there. And Gosnell, come, I see Gosnell coming in, and he comes in, and there's two seats in front of us, and they're quite close, right? Even closer than we are now. And Gosnell looks at the two seats. Like, what would any decent human being do? But, of course, this is not... You would sit in front of me, right? So he takes mm. the seat in front of Anne and spends the whole of the interview mm. making points and touching Anne's leg mm. and then apologizing mm. and then creepy. touching his leg again. Creepy. Just creepy. Just Whoa. just a, a total creep. But anyway, you know, we didn't... Anne didn't mind because we're there to get a story, right? We're not there to get offended or, right, you know... Right. Like, if... You know, we so need call, to get, it's the price you pay. Uh, yeah, we're there to get a story, and um, and and at the end of the day, we're going home to our nice showers, our nice bathroom, and our nice yeah. beds, Oof. and our nice kitchens. And he's going to be yeah, somebody's in a cell. Yeah, to be a cell. Belongs, yeah. So, but he's he's happy there. His biggest problem is he didn't get into the poetry class. Mm. He writes poetry as well. Uh, he's in a band. He plays um, the piano, but. Uh, he could have been a classical pianist. He loves telling us this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but he wanted to be a doctor. Um, his father wanted him to be a doctor. He's, he's quite upset that the um, the piano is electronic. And we were thinking afterwards, nobody wants him to have piano wire, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. So, uh, you know, it's um, it was an interesting experience. Now, now I remember uh, uh, when we spoke once before, you told me, uh, that he has a foot fetish, and I remember in the film that he had saved babies' feet. That's right. Uh, yeah. In jars. Yeah. He, he, so he, that was one of the things uh, the detectives that were looking for fentanyl and, and stuff like that. And he opened this cupboard, and there's these jars with babies' feet that he cut off and saved, preserved, and labeled with the name of the woman and all that and all the details. You know, dozens of them at one stage, and uh, then. The, we talked to the detectives and they'd listened to his jailhouse conversations, talked about feet the whole time. And we walked in, right? And I just started talking to him and he immediately started talking about feet again. So he's got, a, and his. You um, didn't ask him about the baby's no, feet. No, I, 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 I was saying, oh, he said, I'm doing a, how, I said, how's things, you know, trying to yeah. start. Well, I'm doing a lot of exercise because, as you know, I'm innocent. And when I'm released, I'm going to do a triathlon to celebrate. Oh, I see, so I'm yeah. keeping in shape. But my only problem is. Uh, I don't have shoes to fit my large feet. Right? And he started talking about his feet. And I said, oh, you have large. I was like, oh, you have large feet. And he went like this. He goes, I'm going, what are you doing? And I thought, and he goes, look at my hand, large large hands, large feet, whatever. Uh, but he's just kept going on about his feet. So he's got a foot fetish. He's, you know, he's a, ser he's a classic serial killer, keeping his trophies. You know, he has, he still has the receipt of the, the woman he killed. The, um, the She was a Nepalese immigrant. I mean, this is another thing, the media. You know, they claim to care about immigrants. They claim came to care about minorities. All of us, most of us minorities were immigrants. Most of us minor, most of us victims were minorities. Mm -hmm. uh, the woman he killed was an immigrant, a refugee, a genuine refugee. Oh. She'd been in a refugee camp for 20 years. She was here four months and he killed her. So, so what a great story. I mean, sorry. Fantastic story. You know, but as Horrible. a... Think of all the all the issues you could raise. Yeah, that. that's right. You would think there would be a number of people in the court watching uh, or taking note of yeah. this and writing articles, but yeah, none but the, did. Nobody no, was they were, there. But then there was a social media storm and they were shamed into covering it, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because of your work, I yes. think. Yes, right. yeah. I see. Wow. Let's talk about the filming of My Son Hunter. 
The film depicts the sordid life that Hunter led and his criminal behavior, which implicates his father, the President of the United States. Philip, were you concerned for your safety and that you might end up committing suicide just like Jeffrey Epstein? <laughs> you know what? I was not concerned and I was I was naive. Actually. Foolish. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because mm. look, we're filmmakers, we're journalists, like surely, you know, the you know so we um we filmed My Son Hunter in Serbia. We filmed Gosnell in Oklahoma. Uh which was great, and then we thought we just felt this needed something different. And and you know, I suppose to make a movie about Hunter Biden's life, you need beautiful women, strip bars, uh, you know, and Serbia has plenty of beautiful women in the strip bars. Um, uh, I believe. Uh, well, and, what do you mean? You believe you were there? Yeah, but well, obviously yeah, I wouldn't well, have gone we, to strip yeah, bars. Yeah, Come on now. Well, you might have looked at one or two just uh, uh, for, for scout, accuracy. For and, scouting purposes. Yeah, for research. Scouting. Research, right, right. yes, yes. Just <clears> get the <throat> atmosphere right. Of course, of course. So um, uh, so we were there, and this is a, as true as God. This is a story. Uh, and we're, we're there, and next thing, one of the actors says, hey, I've been approached by a documentary crew. Uh, they're from they're from South Park. They're part of the South Park team. They're here making a documentary about Hunter Biden, and, and they wanted to talk to me. I'm saying, I hope you didn't talk to them. And he goes, No, only for three hours. Mm -hmm. Actors, you know, once you get once you start asking them, they they will talk. So, although I can't talk, so wait a minute. Just let me make it. Let me get this straight. You guys were there making a film, mm -hmm. and this actor comes up to you and telling you that there's another team making a film about Hunter Biden. Yeah, it's a documentary. So yeah. the next thing they approach me. And it's, it's this guy who was the lawyer for South Park, mm -hmm. right? The, sort of the third wheel of South Park. And he, they, South Park had just signed this $800 million deal, I think, with <laughs> Paramount. And they're, gonna, they're expanding their reach into documentaries, into this, into that. And uh, so they're making a documentary about Hunter Biden. And it kind of, that kind of fits with the whole South Park thing, you know, kind of crazy libertarian stuff. They wanted to come on the set, film the filming, then do interviews with me, and then do interviews with the actors, interviews mm -hmm. with the director. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, lot of, I mean, a lot of people were skeptical. And I said, no, no, it's like, you know, um, all publicity is good publicity. And the South Park guys, they're kind of libertarian. Uh, they, they, would, they kind of would be sympathetic to what we're trying to do, tell the truth and all, and make fun, and but also in a serious way, say something serious. And uh, <clears throat> it's fine, and they, they filmed for several days. I, one thing I did notice, he had the camera on the whole time, mm -hmm. which I thought, wow, they must have a great editor because one of the too much film, too right. much footage, right? right? That's right. it's the biggest. That's too long. I think it was Francis Ford Coppola said, um, "Unlimited budget and unlimited time is the enemy of great art." You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it really is a curse to have too much footage. And uh, they interviewed me for a long time, and then they interviewed me again for a long time. And uh, anyway, we came back. We were editing the film. Six months later, news story. I think it was in the New York Post or somewhere. Uh, South Park lawyer has been representing Hunter Biden for over a year now. So mm -hmm. he was Hunter Biden's lawyer. Mm -hmm. Chief lawyer infiltrated our movie set, asked me detailed questions. And of course, now I remember he was fascinated about where how I got the laptop, how I got the hard drive, who my sources ooh, were, ooh. all this kind of information, right? So um, he, Hunter Biden's crew infiltrated our movie set mm -hmm. uh, to try and find out what you were doing, what our journalistic sources but were. But nothing happened uh, as a result of that? Well, I've, um, <clears throat> I've made a, an ethics complaint to the California Bar Association. Oh, good. You're not allowed to... To misrepresent yourself. No, uh, either, and, and I've read the regulations. Misrepresent yourself by commission or omission. I see. Sure. Failure to failure to declare that you're representing another party. The party, yes, right. the party is 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 an ethical violation. Mm -hmm. It's not enough that you, you remain quiet. You must uh, proactively see. say, "I am. Be careful. I am representing this person now. Can I, now I'm going to ask you some questions." Yeah. So, but that shows you. But see, they came. I should have known. They came to. Serbia in a private jet. See, when you have unlimited money, Hunter Biden, I think, has 19 lawyers now. One, nine, 19. Well, that lawyers. might be one for every five cases against him. Yeah, but, you know, when, you've, when you're Hunter Biden, 
being Hunter Biden means never having to say you're sorry. Mm. You know, this is a man who was getting $86,000 a month from a Ukrainian, a Russian-backed Ukrainian oil and gas company. For consulting. Consulting. Right. Mm. Consulting. He got three, I got $3 million uh, just like that from the mayor of Moscow's wife, the ex-mayor of Moscow's wife. He was involved in several China deals. It was basically, you know, a tour of all America's enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. Hunter Biden was there getting money from them all. And this is when his father was vice president. When his I father think, was right. vice president. Right. And he was introducing his business partners to his father. Mm -hmm. And he was flying on Air Force One and Two with his father. I mean, it's it's smells to high heaven, and that's the most mm -hmm. uh, charitable interpretation of it. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. Again, you're not a real journalist if you're not covering this story. But it's a sad uh, statement about America mm -hmm. and, uh, and our mainstream media, which yeah. for four years couldn't stop talking about Putin running uh, President Trump. Yes. But now we have the laptop, we have all this yep. data, all the money coming yep. in uh, from enemies of America yeah. uh, to the son of the vice president yep. or who would yep. be president, and nobody says, and the mainstream media doesn't no, say no, anything. No, no, look, look. It's, it's okay. It's, you don't, it's not, I'm not talking about conspiracy theories. I'm not talking about. It's not a conspiracy. Uh, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not saying, like, but you cannot, Put, you cannot be honest and say, this is not something worth investigating. Maybe it's all innocent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But look, you, you can't call yourself a journalist and not be extremely interested in the fact that the son of the vice, the drug addicted son, he was, he was on the board of Burisma and, his, and his, in his own autobiography said, I had to leave the board meetings every 20 minutes to get a hit of... Um, is it Cocaine or whatever. Whatever. whatever I think it was on meth. I can't Meth, cocaine, hey, yeah. you know... Uh, I'm not an expert on that. That's not my expertise, that field. So, I believe, so he was bringing nothing to the table. He knew nothing about Eastern Europe. He knew, I, I know more about it. I've made two documentaries, one about mining and one about fracking and one about climate change. So I've interviewed, I know more about the coal industry, the fracking industry, mm -hmm. the oil and gas industry than Hunter Biden will ever know. I could have been on, and I've lived in Romania for seven years as a Financial Times correspondent. I should have been. I could have been on the board of Burisma. I know ten times, a hundred times more about that company. And, and we know it's not fantasy. There's actually a video of Biden. It was taken while he was vice president, bragging that he uh, that he had a billion dollar bribe to the uh, Ukrainians mm -hmm. to fire the prosecutor who was looking into corruption. And it's on film. It's on film. Right. He, he, you won't get the billion dollars. Yeah. You, and you son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. They, they, they fired him. And they like, fired him. He was boasting about it. Right. And he was the guy who probably would have investigated Burisma or those other entities. Look, it's, it doesn't matter if he was investigating his granny. You right. Know. It doesn't matter. He was a prosecutor. Right. A, a leading prosecutor in the Ukraine where his son was the director of a business, and he's boasting that he got that prosecutor Fire. fired. Right. It's like, if he I mean, imagine if his son had a business in Arizona, and Joe Biden boasted, "I got the pro chief, the district attorney in Arizona fired." People, that would be a scandal. This is a massive scandal. It would be the same. It's and the it same. wouldn't be covered. It wouldn't be covered because the press, today's press, is in the uh, is in the pocket of the administration. Yeah. More recently, Phelan, in 2020, your team produced a film called Obamagate that exposes the deep state plot to undermine the Trump candidacy and the Trump presidency. Now, the Obamagate movie is really a filming of an onstage play performed at the Hudson Theater in Los Angeles. Mm. And in that play, the script for each of the actors is word for word text messages, declassified files, congressional and court transcripts, tweets, and statements of top government and FBI officials. So it's all completely true. The script yeah. is exactly word for word of those documents. But I'm sorry to say, Philem, for me, the film doesn't have nearly the impact or entertainment value of your prior works. So how is the film generally received? Well, that Obama gate was based on on FBI Lovebirds Undercovers, which was the original, um, and it was it was very funny actually. 
I think Obama gave, suffered from just an overwhelming amount of information. But the original, ah. the original FBI Love Birds undercovers was based on the text messages of Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, ah. and and just a bit of that their, would have been better. Yeah. So it was it was hilarious. It opened in in DC for one night uh, after the venue cancelled six days before. Of course, of course. Uh, and uh, we, that's a thing called verbatim theater, where you oh. you take a, a either a court case or an inquiry or an investigation, and you publish only the eyewitness testimony or, the, or actual under oath stuff. And uh, it's very interesting because you go to the theater and you you watch the audience; they're listening to what the playwright has written. You go to verbatim theater; they're all leaning forward because they want to hear, they know that every word that said was a word said by an actual real person. Mm -hmm. And uh, Obama get an FBI love birds on the covers. It's, it's like, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's part teen romance uh, because Strzok and Page are mm -hmm. lovey dovey. But then they're going, we got to stop Trump getting elected. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to mm -hmm. make this Russian connection. And it's like, and you could see that it was a, a ideology in search of a crime. Yeah, but uh, the acting, uh, the fact that it was a filming of a play mm -hmm. is very different yes. than making a movie where there's sets and actions yeah. and all sorts of yes. things happening. So um, uh, would you do it again? Yes, yes. But um, but you see, the great thing about it is, and I, what I, the great thing about it is you can take little clips. I think... I think a play, a film play, uh, is a tough thing to hold for the hour and a half or whatever. Maybe make it shorter, mm -hmm. um, and then send out little clips across social media. Ah. So little like, comedic clips, little that would be yeah okay. Yeah. So what you do is you film, make it shorter, f uh, film it, and then clip it up. Right. Uh, and, right. For uh, that purpose. Yes. Right, yeah. but I don't see um, uh, that particular movie uh, being downloaded or streamed uh, as, uh, like Gosnell would be, no, or, no. or like My Son Hunter. Yeah, it's but a Gosnell, I think Gosnell cost two point five million to make, and uh, Obama Gate cost twenty thousand or fifty thousand. <laughs> I can't remember what sure. it was. You know, it's a play. It's, it's a play. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The cameraman. Yeah. Uh, the great thing about plays is the left think they control the theater world. So we and. When when I dare to put my Irish accent and 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 uh, and beliefs into the theater world, they go nuts. So we did Ferguson, right? So Ferguson, it was the shooting of Michael Brown in yes. Ferguson. Yes, hands up. Was don't it, shoot. This was a this was a play. Yes. Oh, I didn't know about this. One. Yes, and uh, <clears throat> actually, it was our first verbatim play, and we I wrote it, or actually, I cur I call it curated it. Yeah, because yeah. there was. 30 eyewitness accounts of the last couple of hours of Michael Brown's life. And it's, a, it's an amazing, it's like a minute by minute of the last hour and a half of his life, him robbing the shopkeeper, beating up a shopkeeper, him attacking the cop, him gentle walking, giant, I thought. walking along Wasn't the middle of the giant? road, yeah. you know, and uh, it's very dramatic. And the last scene is this young female witness saying, uh, you know, who, who dodged the subpoena for months had a black nationalist tattoo on her arm, but then said, I've come here to tell the truth and tells the truth how he attacked the cop. And she said, remember the prosecutor said, that, could it have ended any different? Yeah, it could have ended different if Michael had made different choices. And she's a 19-year-old black nationalist mm. and she's saying this. Mm -hmm. And very, very powerful in the end. Mm. And uh, it was so powerful, the truth about it, that nine of the actors walked out during rehearsals they quit? Of course. The truth doesn't Because they match. don't believe in that. Yes. Well, the, the, it was the truth yeah. they didn't uh, The truth they, didn't they didn't match their beliefs. Yeah. Like, they walked out. They said, we're not doing this. Yes. and uh, Because it's propaganda that's true. Like the first, the opening night, there was somebody on stage with the script, and it was the first time they'd held the script in their hands. But there, she was a great actress and professional. So um, the, the left hated it. We got enormous publicity because we were in the theatre world. Conservatives are not allowed in the movie world. They're not allowed in the documentary world. But boy, they're not allowed in, in our theatres. My Ooh. God, we'd have to fumigate the place afterwards. So mm -hmm. then we went to, we took Ferguson to New York and we got three quarters of a page in the, in the, uh, in the Wall Street Journal. We, there was a, 
an abortion play recently in New York. Oh, a, an abortion comedy. Comedy. Oh, That's yeah. right. Mm. Oh, God, a truth about abortion. So I said, let's do... So at the same time, I put on a play, Oh, Gosnell, the truth about abortion. And it was fully verbatim again, a reenactment of the most dramatic scenes from the court case. And uh, we got reviewed twice in the New York Times because it was a play. So it was our way of trying to get I the see. truth to the mainstream audience. So, mm -hmm. yeah, play mm -hmm. is not... Uh, it doesn't travel as far, but the media sometimes for bigger bang for your buck as well. I see. We get a lot I of media see. coverage for a small outlay. Um, oh, and all right, that's a different reason. Yeah. Right, I understand. So I understand. it's all about trying to, you know, sometimes conservatives, I think they think they're in the arguing business. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're in the persuasion business. That's correct. Do you yeah. want to win an argument or do you want to persuade someone? It's very mm -hmm. nice. I'm an Irish. I'm from Northern Ireland. I like arguing the same as the next mm -hmm. guy. Actually, they don't get more, anywhere. More than the next guy, right? Mm -hmm. But really, you have to remember, if you, you know, what's the point in arguing if you're not persuading? Mm -hmm. Now, Philem, you've produced films and plays on a variety of timely and controversial topics. Mm -hmm. And here in California, there are so many of those that uh, are worthy of exploration that it's difficult to choose which one to investigate next. But I came up with some ideas for future films, and I'd like to know what uh, your thoughts are. No, uh, and, and, and I'd like credits. Uh, I don't need any uh, any uh, royalties. Right? I know. Just, every, time you, every time you name a I'm going to say, I already thought of that. I don't want to give credits. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Give me a, you know, It doesn't have to be executive producer, okay. but producer would be fine. I, I How about... Um, the attack by a vagrant on Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband, in his home. Now, this was a top story a month or two ago, but since then, we haven't heard a thing. It's been swept under the rug. Now, it's the kind of seedy story that could make for another award-winning true crime documentary. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, actually. I think that, I mean, but I, I think that is a great, a great idea. I mean... If you even if you take the most benign interpretation of that attack, it says a lot about it. It says a lot about the San Francisco, as as President Trump would say, the asshole that it is. Uh, what it says about even the, the corruption and the incompetence of the Capitol Police, who were supposed to be guarding him. I mean, my God, he is. The husband of the Speaker of the House. Yeah, the third in line to be uh, president, actually. And, 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 so, and some guy can go in in his underwear or take him out and of his And they bed. let him in. And they let him in. They right? let him in. So, or, or he broke in. Or, but how can you break into someone's house like that? Right, uh, right. So, it, it, and, even, and from what I understand, when the police came, uh, Pelosi answered the door. So he, he wasn't, and he wasn't screaming or I yelling. I think I've seen a video. He's kind of holding the hammer, or, you know. The, <laughs> you know, I, I believe it or not, I probably go for the more benign. This was a crazy, uh, crazy guy, and it did actually happen, as as Pelosi says. I go for that, but even that says a lot. That says a lot, and you know, and by the way, he, this guy was a leftist. Uh, this, you know, actually, he was a crazy to be fair to him. Yeah, he was. He had taken too mu too many drugs in his life, um, and it had, had affected him. Probably, you know. So, yeah, great story. It's a great, great story. It, it's you know because you can. It, it's a microcosm of America, you know, mm. these Democrat cities, the. The the, the 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 degradation, the seediness, the, seediness, right. the degradation, the the threat of violence, the 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 danger, the incompetence, the the way the media covers up things doesn't. And actually, when you see the media not being curious about something, you I just go, I need to look at this, right? And they don't, right. they're not curious about this. They weren't curious about Gosnell because they didn't like the, what they were the going story. to find. That's right. It, this is not a good look for Gavin Newsom, who wants to be president. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a good look for uh, for the Capitol Police. It's not a good look for Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is is jetting around America, raising money in in a DOD jet. Right. You know, <clears throat> a big one, a big, big one, one. Uh, with a nice bar in it. Um, and this is not a good look. This is not. Mm -hmm. This says everything you need to know or a lot of what you need to know about America today. Therefore, the media are not 
curious about this story. All right, so it's worth looking into, and I, I, I hope in the future we'll be seeing um, uh, either a book or a uh, true crime uh, story, Pelosi, true crime video yeah. about uh, Mr. Pelosi and his uh, uh, vagrant friend. Ooh. <laughs> now, talk more about San Francisco. Yes. What's you know, recently, I think the Board of Supervisors, some government body, is now thinking about planning and having discussions about reparations. You know, reparations are a hot thing, you know. Uh, yes. we got to take care of people mm -hmm. who never were slaves. Um, we're going to give them money from people who never owned slaves. And yep. uh, they are now actually planning. You might have seen, well, you're in California. Mm -hmm. $5 million to every uh, black family or black person. I don't know. I haven't read all the criteria because mm -hmm. I assume it's never going to happen. But uh, this is yet another example of uh, what uh, the, of the rot that is happening uh, in San Francisco, and it's going. What happens in California spreads the rest yes. of America. So do you, is this another movie idea, or uh, well, uh, you know, you know I, sort I, of I, root, I, roots the roots the sequel. Root roots the sequel because we all, if we had our DNA taken, I'm sure all of us have. Some percent of black, uh, you know, uh, descendants. Well, Elizabeth Warren is one th sixteen hundred of an There's Indian, Indian. So, um, so she uh, can open casinos. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Well, I mean, um, does Rachel Dolsey or does she, or whatever that lady was, uh, and and this one I don't know. This, she's the one that pretended to be black. Uh, she, oh, uh, with the curly hair. Yes. Right. Does, does she qualify? And by the way, if, if you think you're black, are you? Maybe you, you are. can identify as black. Uh, you can. Identify. What about the famine, by the way? What about the famine? Which famine are we speaking about? You, ooh. Oh, the Irish famine. We we don't care about those minorities. Those that doesn't count. I, the I Italians think I'm going to go here. back to Ireland and demand reparations from the British government. Uh, yeah. For my ancestors who starved during the Irish famine. That's a good point. I think all, in our backgrounds, there must have been some discrimination against all of us, well, right? look, for which more, somebody else should pay. On a more serious note, I mean, <clears throat> if, if anybody deserves reparations in this planet, it's the Jewish people, actually, right? Thrown out of every country. Thrown out of every country. With nothing. Not allowed into America during yep. the Holocaust. Just, you know, right. why don't they sue the American? Turn the ships around. Turn the ships around. Turn the ships around, sending them to their death. Sending them to their death. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, look, yeah, I mean, and that's within living memory. That is, you know, in fact, there are still people living who were in those ships that were turned around. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, look, it's, it's, it's complete madness. But I don't think, I wouldn't, you're saying it'll never happen. This is California. You're right. Hard to know. Hard they give away know. that very nice piece of property on Manhattan Beach to a family that had already been compensated. This is the thing that people don't know. That family, the Bruce's Beach compound. Tell me the story. I, this yeah, one so I Bruce's don't know. Beach. So the, this black family back in 1914 had a, a a black boarding house for people to go to the beach, and the state came along or the town came along, and eminent domain took it, but took, I think, 14 other uh, houses. They paid a total of 60000 for all the properties, which is a lot of money back then. Then it might have been, yeah. Yeah, but they paid this family 14000 for their property. So they got the biggest amount. There was all these all this white property taken and this black property taken, and they got 14000 to it. But they've been campaigning for years that this was racism, and they just got the property handed back to them, and then they resold it back to the city for twenty million. So that this family, is a story I hadn't seen. Bruce's Beach, Google it. Bruce's, Bruce's Beach. Twenty. They've just sold it back to. So they that's reparations of twenty million. And it wasn't these same people, right? It's their descent, descendants. Descendants of the, those people of, right. of the Bruces. Of the Bruces. There you go. And yeah. from nineteen thirteen, so they get they got they got eminent domain twice. You know. So look. This is California. Hold on, hold on to your hat. Hold on to your wallet. Yeah. Now, how about California declaring itself as a trans sanctuary state where the government is attempting to isolate parents from the decisions by their children to get trans surgery? Now, there's plenty of sexually charged drama to investigate in this one, right? 
The problem with that is, right, and we've discussed this, by the way, you know, watch this space, we're going to do something on it. But we thought, but funny, we thought about doing a movie on, on this very topic, but it's just so sad. Mm. It's just so sad. Uh, and we won't know how sad until 10, 20 years yeah, from well, now. I'll tell when you, these people... Mutilating who, children is always... You know, this is... this is. They talk about top surgery and bottom surgery. This is... This is mutilation. This is mutilation, pure and simple. Yeah, you know, you know, the talk, you know, the, we're supposed to condemn Muslims for uh, as they genital call it, mutilation. Genital mutilation, and then uh, America, you know, um, and it's it's mostly girls that's happening to, not boys. It's girls who have, you know, who they target. So most of this gender mutilation is done on, on young girls, you know, and uh, you know, they um, and and they and they want uh, and they. Talk about Muslims, you know. I mean, it's just that there. This is a, this is a, a social contagion. But it's a so you know, just like anorexia. Anorexia was one of those diseases that affected young teenage girls in the eighties and nineties. Right. Uh, but the school counselor did not turn around to them and say, "Because of your illness, you are a hero." Yeah. Yeah, now, admitting your illness makes yes. you a hero, and now, now right. you know, the, the, the first thing when they saw anorexia was get them to a mental hospital, get them counseling, get get a meal into them, you know, get, you know, mm. get their, you know. Now, if you say, oh, I think I'm a, a, boy. a boy, oh, my God, you're a hero. Yeah, you know? Suddenly, it's going to become fashionable. Yeah, well, it's, it, it's, uh, it's geographically uh, contagious. If one child in a school says it, suddenly there's 10 of them because mm. they, they see how impressive And their hospitals... You don't have to go to Vietnam to have gender uh, surgery anymore, no. right? Yeah. Uh, there are there are well known medical centers that have specialization in it now. This will be this is, this is a horrible. medical scandal on the scale. This is like thalidomide. Only the, only everyone knows mm. they're cutting parts of people's bodies off. People are being made Mutilated. disabled. Mutilated. But thalidomide, nobody knew, and it was a scandal. Imagine what in in fifty years time what they'll be saying about this. Well, it depends what. Who they are in charge, right? Any other ideas? Any ideas you want to think about, or, or you're keeping them close to your chest? Well, we keep them close to our chest. Not we always fear not that someone else will do it, but someone else will do it badly. Yeah, but that's right, and ruin your opportunity yes, to ruin, do it well. Do it sure. well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I remember when we were doing Gosnell, we we're raising money, and of course, people. We raised two point three million for Gosnell in, in forty five days. Amazing! And uh, I remember somebody, uh, some guy who actually went on to be an anti Trumper, and worked for the Lincoln Project, um, announced that he was doing a uh, Gosnell the musical and started a crowdfunding campaign for that. And of course, people were confused. They were going Gosnell the movie Gosnell, and they started donating to his thing. <laughs> At the and, same time, you're and, running your crowdfunding. Wow, I was like, it was intentional just to de deplete. Uh, no, money I think from you? I think I just think that he thought, well, they did it, and it's really easy. I can see the money going in. I can do it, and you know, and I'm going like, you've never made a musical before, you, you know. And by the way, it's a really dumb idea, but you know. So anyway, so people, people are people see something like a movie and they think, oh, I can do that. And by the way, you. You it's, can, you can, but it's a, it's 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 blood, sweat, and tears. Oh and well, to be two, successful, two, is two a years story. of your life. You can so, do lots anyway, of things. What else are we doing? Um, ah, well, the trans thing is interesting. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we have a little little plan there, a little evil plan, maybe. Good, um, good, good. What else is interesting? You know, the Gosnell story. We we did a great podcast on the Gosnell story, by the way, a true crime podcast. Oh, yes, yes. yes. So uh, people should check that out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Serial Killer, a True Crime Podcast. We just wanted to make it easier. So that's Serial Killer, a True Crime Podcast. Uh, it's uh, it was it was number ten in, in true crime podcasts on the planet when it came out, and uh, it's and how many episodes is it? Six, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's it's from the beginning to the end, and it has interviews with the detectives, interviews with the prosecutors, with the real people. These are not actors. Oh now. no, these are real people. Oh, wow. interviews with his okay. with his victims, interviews with his family, and you'll get to hear the voice of Kermit Gosnell himself in jailhouse interviews. Uh, um, Hello, Kermit Gosnell. You know, and uh, mm. oi, and uh, it's it's very very interesting because this all started it all started as a drugs. 
And it was a drugs case until it wasn't and became a case that changed so many lives of the people involved in it. So it's a very, very interesting true crime drama. Glad you made it. Glad you made it. Thank Tell you. me a little bit more about crowdfunding. Do, do you offer them free passes to the movie? Why? I don't understand why people would send money for something if they don't get something for it. I, 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 I understand charity. I understand mm. giving. Uh, I'm a philanthropist. I, I give lots of money to various causes to help make the world a better place in various ways. But I don't understand crowdfunding. No, crowdfunding, they do. They get a perk. And funny, they care oh. about the perks. Okay. Right? So, um, so we had 30,000 people give to the Gosnell movie. And I think it was if you give $30, you got a DVD. Ah, Oh, right. Okay. okay. Uh, you That's know, good. if you got, if you give a hundred, fifty, a hundred, you know, I can't remember. It's all there on. Oh, on, I see. So you do the, get uh, something on the Indiegogo site. If you give a hundred dollars, you got a poster. Now we have to be very careful because you know what the problem with posters is? It's packing them. It's a really expensive uh, it's, in the tube, and it's and it's time consuming actually. Right. Uh, the DVD. I think we ended up sending out ten thousand DVDs or maybe more. Wow. Right? Yeah. And it's like, at least you could just put those in an envelope. Easy to ship. You know, but it wasn't easy. We had to spend several days. Me, like the <laughs> producer, I was in a large shed getting my hands dirty, putting DVD. The humanity. I mean, I, oh, my I, God. I, right. Yeah. But anyway, I was glad. I, I was, to be, I'm only joking, but I was so glad to be sending people out the rewards. Because at the end of the day, we presented them with an idea. Yeah. Right. We said, we're going to make a movie about this. This is important. And they believed in us and they took... They no, trust it enough. Isn't that nice? And they do it, they put it on, I've never been to a site, but you put it on a credit card and that's it. That's it. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, you know, we have a record now. And, sure. And people understand that we will produce what we said we produce and mm -hmm. we'll produce a quality uh, version of it, not a, not, not that's something. Schlock. Yes. Right. right. So we have a, we have a good track record now, but. I just want to thank everyone who's ever donated, and, and many people listening to this will have donated because uh, we couldn't do it without them. And mm -hmm. it's 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 I we do deliver value for money and fun and entertainment and uh, and important, and we tell these stories that nobody else is telling. And I mean, I remember Anne, my wife. Get panicking on our back patio, saying we got to announce the Gosnell movie now because somebody else is going to do it. Our big, we we realized Gosnell was such a great story. We were thinking, oh my God, somebody else is going to do Surprising, it. Surprising, right, that nobody did. No, well, see, and I can understand my son Hunter, people are afraid of doing it, right? They're afraid of you think, the. Yeah. Right? I would think so. Yeah, it's funny. That, I must be stupid. I think I'm too stupid. I, thank God I'm stupid because it never occurred to me. You see, to be but, worried. Yeah, which is good that I'm. Also, an excellent movie. Oh, thank Excellent you. Movie. Thank you. Thank you. It, it was it was good. Robert Davi did a great job. He was the director. He was the Bond mm -hmm. villain, Robert Davi. He's also in the Goonies. And then Brian Godawa did a great job writing it. Um, it's, a, it's a tough one to write because you have to bring in the information, you have to bring in the humor, uh, and you have to bring a narrative story together. It was, it was almost too mm -hmm. much information. But I think we did a good job of of you know of telling it and having a quirky, almost absurdist because it's actually absurd. What and, but the film work and the makeup on Hunter Biden, you know, he was sweaty, smoking, and, and do people actually have to smoke. They have to breathe it in, I guess. It's not, they're not smoking drugs. I know that. But uh, I'll tell you, you, Lawrence Fox, who was the actor who did excellent. it. Excellent. Excellent. He, they were, I don't know, some kind of, what is it on, rosemary or something like that, or some kind of sage, I don't know. But, you know, you smoke that. And it makes you sweat. 30 times a day or 20 times a night for 18 nights. He was feeling it at the end. No matter what you smoke, right? Right. You know, oh, yeah. Breathing smoke in is yes. not what God made your lungs for. Yeah, no. So That's why people run out of the burning house. They don't run into yeah, it. So yeah, so he was sitting in a burning house right. for days and days. And he the, looked like shit. He really looked like he was an No, he's addict. just a great actor. He's just oh, a great actor. And, no, now, a great actor makeup, needs great lines, right? And, and Hunter too. Biden and Brian Godawa gave him great lines. But he's a great, great actor. Party! Like, yes. Right. And, and he... He's a great actor, and and he just looked, looked the part. Looked the part, and you know people say they watched it, and and I noticed that like you feel for him, and that was one thing we didn't want to make Hunter Biden a traditional villain. 
Mm-hmm. Right? You know, not a traditional villain. We didn't want to make him an evil villain. We wanted no, to humanize manipulated. him. Manipulated. Yeah. Very funny. So there's this uh, Nepo baby, uh, Molly Young Fast. She's the daughter of Erica Young. And she's a big liberal, has a podcast in the Daily Beast and is beloved by all. And she's seen both our movie and she's seen, she saw FBI Lovebirds in life. And uh, the criticism of both of them was, the filmmakers have accidentally humanized Hunter Biden, and then the filmmakers have accidentally humanized Struck and Page. And I'm going, Molly, did you ever think when we accidentally did something twice, it wasn't an accident, it wasn't an accident yeah, right? Yeah. Like, who wants to go and see a movie about subhuman or evil people, right? You want to go and see a movie mm. about human beings who are corrupted, right? Because if you believe right. they're human beings, you'll see, you'll understand, and it's much more interesting how someone becomes corrupted. If, you, if they're an evil villain from Ward, Ward Go. It's a Bond movie. Yeah, but you also expect them to be corrupt. So what's the story? Mm. Uh, where's mm. the Where's the will they, won't they? No, the, the movie uh, Hunter left me with the strong feeling that whatever he did, he did it for his father. To, so his father would love him as much as he loved Bo. Right? That was the feeling I yeah. got. Yeah, and... That's a very human, yeah. uh, uh, you know, so many sons have that, you know, yeah. pleasing. And I father. felt sorry for him. Yes. But he's still he, a crook. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. what we want. We you, wanted people you did at some job. little level to feel sorry for him. And he, he almost rede- redeems himself in the movie. And then, you know what? It's much easier to be the corrupt Biden that mm-hmm. I am with my corrupt family. And I'm going to get away with it. And I'm not going to learn any lessons. And by the way, you can see that in his alleged confessional memoir, Beautiful Things. There's no humility. There's no apology. He lies through his teeth because I know things that he doesn't put in that book. And it's, you know, so there's no humility there. He's still uh, corrupt Biden at the, at the be- as is corrupt at the beginning, at as the end, as he was at the that beginning. That hasn't changed. It hasn't, hasn't changed. changed. He, he has the potential to change. He tries to change. He meets someone who could change him. And he just goes, it's just easier to be corrupt. Both uh, Gosnell and My Son Hunter, fantastic. Uh, If you haven't seen them, you can uh, stream them or buy the DVD right on Amazon. Well, Phelan, I want to thank you for spending time with me today and thank you so much more for yours and Anne's courage in making documentary films that educate the public in both memorable and entertaining ways on these important matters. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, a pleasure. I, I'm, I'm, and I'm really glad you're interested in our work and appreciate the, the movies we make because we want to get the stories out there in an interesting way. Thanks make more of them. Thank you. Will do. And thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this episode of Life Lessons with Dr. Bob, please subscribe and you'll be automatically notified of future podcasts in this series. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Life Lessons with Dr. Bob. If you enjoy these interviews with some of today's most influential thought leaders, please follow and rate the show on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget, you can also watch each episode on YouTube as well. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate reading your comments on YouTube and social media, and now you can submit your questions on my website as well. Head over to lifelessonswithdrbob.com and click the question tab at the top of the page or the one on the right side of the screen and let us know what's on your mind. I'll answer your questions at the beginning of each episode, so let it rip. Let's have some fun.